I'm guessing that you too have had the fantasy of being able to completely start over with your wardrobe, have unlimited funds, and your own personal stylist. Would it actually bring wardrobe satisfaction? Unfortunately, the answer to the question, what if, really is, it wouldn't matter whether it's five pounds or five months, inevitably something is going to change in our wardrobe that just doesn't feel quite right. So today let's look at a few principles that you can use in building and maintaining your wardrobe. Well, hello friend, if this is the first time that we are meeting, I'm Mary Beth with At What Cost, where simple living and deep faith go hand in hand. Now, as I've mentioned before, I am a working mom. I have three boys that are all school-aged now, and I do work a full-time job during the day. So my wardrobe kind of varies based on what's happening. I have found as I have progressed in this journey toward minimalism that even having a capsule wardrobe has been somewhat difficult to figure out how to do. So I have instead kind of gone under these three different principles of how I like to structure my wardrobe. The first is that everything has to fit me right now. I know it's frustrating. We all have that favorite shirt from like two sizes ago that we really liked. And maybe those sizes are up, maybe those sizes are down, but either way, it's not something that we would typically wear right now, but we do keep it for someday or for just nostalgic or sentimental reasons, but we don't actually use it, wear it, or feel comfortable in it. So everything that I have in my wardrobe has to fit me right now. Now, out of season wear, again, living in Georgia, we pretty much have almost the same kind of season all of the time. We had our two weeks of winter and our four hours of spring, and now it's warm. So I tend to have a lot of layers. If your wardrobe is very seasonal, then just do your best to keep the things that you only really love and that you know fit you well. Chances are pretty good if you didn't wear it this winter, pulling it out of the attic or the basement or wherever you store it, it's not gonna fit next winter either. And you probably won't like it as much then either. Now, the next criteria that I have is that everything works for the role that it is intended to play. So if I have clothes that I need to be able to wear to church, the things that I have that I've set aside for that particular role works for that particular role. I don't wanna spend any extra time on Sunday morning trying to figure out just what I'm going to wear. I have a few outfits that I designate for that particular role. Now, I also have some crossover outfits. So some of the things that I wear to church, I can also wear for work if I have to do kind of a business casual. And I may even be able to use those for a date night or just time out with friends where I wanna feel a little bit dressed up. Now, another role that I will keep clothes for is just our kind of lounging around the house. Maybe I'm working from home and I wanna feel a little bit it put together, but I certainly don't need to dress up. I also don't want to be walking around with clothes with holes in them. So I have things that are more for casual time at home. I may need to run out to the kids' school or to the grocery store, and so I can use those items for that as well, but they certainly are not as dressy as my other items. Now, the next criteria is pretty flexible, but I think it's an important one. So everything that is in my wardrobe makes me just a little bit happy or satisfied. Now, in a minute, we are going to talk about true happiness and all of those things, but I do want clothes that I value. And like I said, this can be flexible. Maybe what you value is having clothes that are very well made or maybe 
having thrifted clothes is more valuable to you or maybe the value that they have is sentimental and they also fit in some of the other categories. So this idea of keeping our clothes because they fill some significant value that we have or they just kind of make us happy to wear is a really important factor. It draws us to wear those items more often and really get the use out of them and it just helps us to better see the impact that our wardrobe can have in a very positive way. Because let's be honest, if we're wearing clothes that we don't necessarily like, they don't fit very well, and they don't really make us feel good about the things we're doing, then why would we even keep them in our wardrobe? So we talked about what is on the list for setting up this criteria for our wardrobe. Let's talk about what's not on the list, okay? There's, now there's a plane. Y'all, it is like mode of transportation day. We had a truck, a train, a plane. Like, if John Candy and Steve Martin show up, we're in trouble. Trains, planes, and automobiles. Anybody catch that? Just me? Okay. Just me. So we have talked about what is on the list for criteria. Let's talk about what is not on the list, okay? This is a big one. So the first thing that I have on the list is that other people think that we look cute in it. Now, let me explain why this is on the list. So I have a dress that I kind of really like on the hanger, but don't really like on my body. Like it's way too short. I feel like it doesn't really, I don't know, it just doesn't sit well on me, but I have gotten several compliments on the dress because, well, it's a cute dress, but if I don't feel comfortable in it, even though other people may think that it looks nice on me or whatnot, if I don't feel comfortable in it, I'm just not gonna wear it. So items that we think we need to keep in our wardrobe because so-and-so said it was a flattering color on us or the shape was right, but we just don't feel comfortable in it, don't really have a place in our wardrobes. The next is that you have to break the bank to keep your wardrobe or to add these items into your wardrobe. We want to make decisions that are sensible about our wardrobe. So if it is important to us to have a well-made piece of clothing, that's great. But if our budget doesn't allow for it, then maybe we need to hold off save some money so that we can make the more responsible decision to actually obtain the item. Or maybe we can consign some of the things that we are looking to get out of our home so that we're better able to purchase those items that we want to add to our wardrobe. We never want to use minimalism or decluttering as an excuse to just get rid of everything and spend money on whatever we want. That's not really the goal of decluttering. This last one is really more of a public service announcement. Now, part of what sparked this video was a question that came up about something that I probably am a little late to the party with, but skinny jeans, side parts, and laughing emojis. You know what I'm talking about. I'm sure you do. So my last criteria is that I don't allow 15 year olds on TikTok to dictate what is stylish for me. So here is the public service announcement. If you enjoy a side part, I mean, hello, like, yeah, I enjoy a side part. I probably do use that emoji more than I need to, and I definitely own only skinny jeans. But here's the deal. If that's what you enjoy wearing, if you feel comfortable in that, you should just wear what makes you feel comfortable and not worry too much about what the trends are because if you wait just a few minutes, it'll probably change. I also want to touch on this idea of happiness and contentment and what truly makes us happy and content. So you know that on this channel, we are all about simple living, but we're also looking to deepen our faith by simplifying our lifestyles. So when it comes to our wardrobes, Deepening our faith through the act of maintaining our wardrobe is an important aspect of that faith. 
in one of my very first videos that I will reluctantly link in the cards because I think going back and looking at yourself a year earlier can be just a tad bit cringeworthy because we all grow and learn and you know blah 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 but the things that I discussed in that video about seeking contentment in our clothing and unfortunately worrying so much about what we are going to wear that it sometimes can cloud our judgment is just as true today as it was a year and a half ago. We want to feel comfortable in our clothing. We want to feel confident. And yes, it may even make us happy. However, finding our contentment and joy in the Lord is really what is going to shine. Now, at the beginning of this video, we talked about the way that in five pounds or five months, the styles or what we choose to wear may vary greatly. So if we are looking only at the outward appearance and what makes us feel happy on the outside, inevitably, when that one particular shirt or those one particular pair of jeans that we love to wear starts to make us a little bit less happy, where can we draw for contentment and security and happiness and joy that's not going to fade with the jeans or the shirt? Well, we look to the Lord for that contentment and that joy because Jesus tells us, if my father cares for the birds and dresses the flowers of the fields, how much more will he care for you? Spending all of our time adjusting our clothing and worrying if there's a gap like, you know, back there and all of those things, they distract away from our confidence and shift our focus off of what truly matters, again, into thinking about ourselves and what other people think of us. Our goal as believers is to live a life that brings glory and honor to God. And one of the best ways that we can do that is not only being comfortable in our own skin, but being comfortable in our clothing so that we can focus on the things that truly matter. Now, research shows that most of you watching are not actually subscribed. So go ahead and click that little button right over here so that you don't miss out on any of the upcoming videos and come join our community. It's really fun, very positive, and I hope that you'll enjoy it as much as I do. Now, let's talk more about how our family transitioned into this more simplified lifestyle when I got rid of 80% of the things in our home. I'll tell you how I did it right up here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.